areas, as just noted in working papers 105 and 136, has created a need to consider operational capabilities in management of the airspace above flight level 600. The number and type of operations above flight level 600 will continue to grow with the advent of new technology and business markets. While currently there are limited operations above flight level 600, industry continues to innovate at an accelerated pace. As the demands on global aviation continue to increase in terms of predictability, capacity, efficiency, safety, and operational flexibility, including operations above flight level 600, it is vital that globally harmonized frameworks are developed. A global framework for operations above flight level 600 will need to consider existing standards, furthering performance-based standards and procedures, and agreed upon information exchange models and provisions for increased automation. The desire to create and apply overly prescriptive standards for evolving technologies and procedures may burden the system and discourage innovation. Indeed, a basis for the strategic and tactical management of operations above flight level 600 already exists via the utilization of several current air traffic management standards, particularly the UTM construct and mature safety management systems. Building upon this base, ICAO is in a position to work with member states and industry to create needed criteria, as well as a single global framework that leverages a performance-based approach to the management of operations. I'd like to invite the conference to recommend that ICAO and member states work with industry to acknowledge the increase in innovation in international operations above flight level 600 and share information on current and forecasted needs. In recognition of that, recommend that ICAO create a cross-panel work plan to consider needed criteria, operational considerations, and operator-provider responsibilities for operations above flight level 600 throughout the course of normal development and amendment of standards and recommended practices. And we'd like to request ICAO and member states to work with industry to consider current and future work in emerging technologies that utilize performance-based global frameworks in the area of information management sharing, strategic planning, separation standards, situational awareness, and security to develop a complementary framework for operations above flight level 600. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, United States. Is Piru on the room? Okay, Piru, can you present working paper 136, please? Gracias, señor presidente. Bu Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, everyone. The working paper 136 present, uh, presents Peru's experience with the Project Loon, which is a high altitude, heavy free unmanned balloon network that aims to bring the internet to underserved parts of the world. The Peru DGCA was receptive to these innovations and has promoted this project in order to provide, uh, through these balloons, internet services to unserved parts of the country by providing internet to various sectors and also for emergency services and medical, for providing remote medical information. In 2017, they established a special um, rules for this. There were many overflights in the Lima flight information region, region. And in 2017, there was devastating flooding caused by El Nino. And so the Peruvian government with the local telecommunication service provider has worked together with Loon to offer a series of balloons which were already airborne for operational testing to provide free mobile telecommunications and internet uh, capability uh, to those affected. And this is to tens of thousands of people in the center and northwest of the country. This was also very useful because we have been able to provide new capacity for services to the citizens thanks to working cooperatively with various stakeholders. And this means that there were benefits for citizens, the industry, and the state. So given this uh, positive experience, we will 
continue with this. And we expect that there will be more balloon flights. And so there's a recommendation. We support the recommendation in the Secretariat Working Paper 16 that requests ICAO to provide guidance on the regulatory aspects of these very high altitude operations. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Piru. I now ask Council to present Working Paper 173. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning to you all. Until recently, only a few states possessed the resources to launch space aircraft. As the desire to reach space increases and the economy and economic incentives increase, more states and commercial entities are pursuing the capability. Commercial space operations are growing in numbers, complexity and launch frequency. Unmanned aircraft, including unmanned free balloons, are also moving through controlled airspace to high and ultra-high altitudes as the technology to do so moves from theory to test, to application. As the number of transitions through controlled airspace increases, it becomes more important for ANSPs to be even more actively involved in the planning and operation of these endeavors. The challenge is that as these flights become more common, there will be increased workloads for ANSPs and air traffic controllers to coordinate each flight safely. Additionally, these operations will eventually affect capacity. States, commercial operators and ANSPs will need clear operating standards for these missions. Standards and recommended practices and guidelines for the training of personnel and established codified procedures need to be established for these events. It is essential to create defined equipage requirements for these air and spacecraft to ensure they are cap compatible with the current surveillance and communication systems in aviation. Sovereignty of the airspace between flight level 600 and outer space lies with states, and ICAO is responsible for the safe introduction of commercial international air travel there. In outer space, the international space treaties are applicable. Further study is required to better understand the impact of these operations and what they have on the efficiency and safety, as well as potential growth in this in industry, and to provide guidance to air navigation service providers regarding the increased demands these operations are placing on air traffic management resources. The ICAO Space Learning Group should continue its work to assist states to understand the impact future commercial space operations can have on international civil aviation. We ask the conference to support the actions in the executive summary of our paper. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Council. May I have a show of support for this paper to be discussed? Thank you. I now invite ICC AIA to present working paper 166. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning. This paper presents the views of ICC AIA on operations of high altitude, long endurance, unmanned aircraft systems and lighter than aircraft which are under ICAO's remit. Although no new standards are presently required, in order to enable safe and orderly expansion of higher airspace operations, the global community, in partnership with industry, should analyze potential issues this forecasted expansion may cause. We recommend moving forward on this shared endeavor with some key principles outlined in this paper and echoed in the ICAO GAMP and GATMOC. The conference is invited to agree to industry's recommendations, noting that the Hale industry has accepted and is supporting principles outlined in the GAMP and GATMOC documents. The Hale industry ant appreciates the efforts that ICAO has made with the drone-enabled events to expedite implementation of new concepts, that the Hale industry is working cooperatively with other industry members on activity not under ICAO's remit, to provide synergy between evolving lower and higher airspace concepts, requesting that ICAO develop near-term guidance material enabling states to adopt a consistent general approach to accommodating international higher airspace operations, and request states who will be the beneficiaries of higher airspace operations and in support of the UN Sustainable Development Goals to agree to consider risk-based operational trials in their airspace, enabling economic benefits. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. We have a show of support for this paper to be discussed. Thank you. I invite the Secretary to provide any clarification. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, 
So there have been several papers that request ICAO to develop guidance material, and we propose that it would be perhaps most efficient if those who have developed such guidance material uh, provide them to us, and we would take them through an internal process to ensure consistency with the relevant ICAO uh, policies and provisions, uh, with a view, of course, that those that are consistent can then be provided through ICAO as guidance material to other states. <clears throat> there are also some requests uh, in these papers for provisions and guidance material that are quite specific. As the issues that need to be addressed are detailed in the text of the various working papers, uh, we suggest that it is probably more effective to let the ICAO process determine the exact scope of the work to address these issues. In other words, to be not so prescriptive in the, in the, that the, that the conference not be too prescriptive in the uh, subjects that need to be addressed. Uh, we do have an established process to take issues and feed them through the Air Navigation Commission into our work program. And that is a process that is uh, um, open and transparent to uh, ICAO states. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Secretary. The floor is now open for discussion. I see Iceland. Good morning, all. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Iceland would like to support the general thrust of Working Paper 162, which is very much in line with Working Paper 16 from the Secretariat, Working Paper 41 presented by Spain and others. We have, however, the following comments specifically in relation to Little C and the reference to a complementary framework which we believe would merit from being aligned with the GANP and the ASPO framework as discussed under Agenda Item 1. We would like to receive confirmation that it also covers the transition suborbital and commercial space operations. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Iceland. New Zealand. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, New Zealand supports working paper 16 by the Secretariat, working paper 41 previously pre presented by the European States, working paper 105 by Kenya, and working paper 162 by the United States. As a number of speakers have said, operations at high altitude are likely to increase in number, often involve multiple states, use new technologies, and thus the need to ensure harmonious regulatory and operating environments will similarly increase. ICAO, in our view, is well placed to work with member states and industry to develop guidance on these matters, including issues of cyber security. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. China? Thank you, Ms. Chair. Good morning. China supports WP16 presented by Secretariat. Meanwhile, we would like to remind the committee that IQ and the United Nations Office for Outer Space Affairs have jointly established a space learning group and had held several seminars. In 2017, the space learning group established a legal subgroup which is currently conducting research on the regulatory regimes and mechanisms for high attitude operations at suborbital operations. This group is expected to complete a report by the end of this year to be presented to the 40th Assembly of IQ depending on its maturity so as to facilitate in a better and more timely manner the establishment of the regulatory mechanism for suborbital operations. So member states are invited to pay close attention to the work and the reports of the sublegal group. Thank you, Ms. Chair. Thank you, China. Australia? Thank you, Jane. Good morning, everyone. Um, Australia supports the working paper six from 16 from the um, Secretariat, and we support the papers from USA and very supportive of the paper, uh, working paper 173 from Canso. The one thing we do note in this discussion is that there is a quite a range of requests as to what states want ICAO to do. It starts from one extreme, which seems to be let's go straight and get some standards and recommended practices drafted next week, to let's just have a look at it in terms of a study. Um, I think I'd encourage my colleagues to be clear what guidance we want to give ICAO in this regard. Uh, from Australia's perspective, I think we're, we like the study idea. Um, 
And we think the study should first look at just what sort of demand we are looking at. Secondly, having established that, what are the existing frameworks by states to address this? Because clearly some states have some experience in this area and therefore would have some form of existing framework in place. And then if we've established the need to move to standard to, to some form of guidance material or provisions, uh, then at that stage we could progress with that work. But I think that's fairly important, Chair, that we have that clear transition of what's required here. Thank you. Thank you, Australia. Rwanda. Thank you. Good morning, Chairman, and good morning, colleagues. Rwanda supports Secretariat Paper 16 and support the comments currently made by the Secretariat on the panel this morning. We also support Kenya with Working Paper 105. Rwanda supports Working Paper 162 presented by the United States on the recommendations as proposed in the Executive Summary's actions of recommendations. In particular, Action Item C. Progress is always enabled to propel forward when member states recognize the need to work with industry and stakeholders. It is true, as stated in the working paper, the demands in global aviation is ever increasing and with, and with its technology. Because of this, some states re will require more time and patience in meeting global demands. It is for this reason it is vital that ICAO continue to work with industry and stakeholders in the developments of the global framework for operations above flight level 600 and to address the need to consider existing standards further, furthering performance-based standards and procedures as stated in the working paper. Thank you. Thank you, Rwanda. Spin. Gracias, señor presidente. Thank you, Chair. Our delegation supports working paper 16 from the Secretariat, working paper 96 from the UAE, the working paper from Kenya 105, and 136 from Peru. As for working paper 16, we support the recommendations that the Secretariat has drawn up. We believe it necessary to talk about the environment regarding and performance issues. It also speaks to the need to deal with uh, flight performance in uh, upper airspace. And these flights must comply with the agreements and the rules regarding performance. And I would like to add another recommendation to ensure that upper airspace flights should have no impact on the performance of flights in flight levels under that uh, FL 600. We also support working paper 96 from the UAE in that efforts uh, are required to ensure compliance with 16 and 41. We would also like to see alignment of uh, working paper 16 with uh, flights uh, in upper airspace. For us, those flights are part of uh, airspace flights. And so we also support the elements uh, that deal with uh, compliance in Working Paper 96. Thank you. Thank you, Spin. Ifatka. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. IFATCA, the International Federation of Air Traffic Controllers Associations, support the general direction of all working papers on this topic, in particular Working Paper 96 by the United Arab Emirates, Number 162 by the United States of America, and Number 173 by CANCEL. Current provisions related to air traffic management are not sufficient to handle operations at very high altitudes and near space. 
For instance, segregation of airspace required to accommodate the transit of such operations through controlled airspace should take into account the impact on existing users and on ATM system capacity. The need to travel through controlled airspace to develop such operations makes even more pressing the requirement for guidelines to make compatible current ATM with near space operations. We therefore support the proposal by the Secretariat to progress the work as necessary through the Air Navigation Commission and expert groups. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Ifatka, United Kingdom. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, we note the Secretariat's uh, comments earlier concerning this uh, topic. Uh, and uh, in support of Working Paper 166, we would wish to encourage ICAO to develop a global framework for aeronautical operations above flight level 600 uh, and to include invitations to all panels and, uh, and expert groups to consider operations above 600 as part of their regular business. Uh, the issues raised, plus how operations above flight level 600 may require evolution of Annex 2, Rules of the Air, Annex 11, ATS, and uh, in particular the airspace classification system, uh, and uh, Annex 11 and PANS ATM air traffic service provision requirements and separation standards, and Annex 10 CNS requirements. We would also encourage ICAO to consider when, re uh, when developing requirements for effective airspace management above flight level 600 to build upon the content of the forthcoming DOC 10,088. With regards to any, uh, with, our, with regards to space, any future provisions should be developed jointly between the aviation and space communities in coordination with ICAO and the UN Office for Outer Space Affairs for commercial space operations, safe transit through airspace. Uh, the promotion of best practice will be appropriate at this stage and we would, should exercise caution about developing standards too soon as designs and capabilities are operating, uh, sorry, are evolving rapidly. However, Mr. Chairman, this should not be an open-ended period Clarity on airspace management requirements is needed sooner rather than later to facilitate agile and proportionate segregation up to the point at which space operations can eventually be safely integrated. Such, proportional and ag such proportionality and agility is necessary to enable and ensure safe transit of commercial space operations through airspace without incurring disproportionate impacts upon the flow of conventional aviation. Thank you. Thank you, United Kingdom. Council. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We would like to support the actions in Working Paper 162 from the United States, as it calls for performance-based criteria and approaches to management of these operations. We welcome Action A to share information and suggest ICAO strengthens the ICAO Sp Space Learning Group to be able to do this. Regarding Action B, we support the cross-panel work plan through the development and amendment of SARPs when necessary, and we support Action C to work with industry regarding information management and sharing. Further, we support Working Paper 96 from the UAE, Working Paper 105 from Kenya, and Working Paper 136 from Peru regarding the uh, Loon project, 166 from ICAO, and Working Paper 16 uh, from the Secretariat. But I would like to say that we support the comments by Australia regarding the way forward of uh, tackling this approach. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Council. United Arab Emirates. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Assalamu alaikum and good morning, everyone. Uh, the UAE supports Working Paper 16 and appreciates the clarification made by the Secretariat. We also appreciate the efforts made for the preparation of Working Paper 41 and the working paper from Kenya, Peru, USA, Cancer, and ICAO. Um, uh, echoing my colleagues from Australia, I think it is uh, important to have clarity on the way forward. And I do strongly believe that the common spirit of all the working papers that we are in front of very evolving innovation and technologies that we need to uh, move expeditious, expeditiously to uh, provide uh, the applicable provisions for. Uh, having said that, there is a clarity in the UAE working paper as well as the working paper 162 by the United States about having uh, um, a working group or uh, a body that will be composed by ICAO and the applicable organizations and states 
to uh, move forward and put an appropriate roadmap to uh, develop such important provisions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Kenya? Thank you, Chair. Uh, Kenya would wish to express its support for uh, the recommendations made uh, in regard to this topic, and uh, in particular, the action called uh, by Council in their working paper, that is Action A, uh, would like to request that uh, this guidance that ICAO is being requested to create should actually focus more on uh, overcoming the coordination challenges that are being experienced by states who have already um, these high altitude operations. As such, states should be requested to share um, the challenges they are experiencing in uh, accommodating these higher altitude operations through the control layer space. Thank you. Thank you, Kenya. India? Thank you, Chairman. India supports Working Paper 16 presented by Secretariat, Working Paper 96 by United Arab Emirates, and Working Paper 162 by United States. Thank you. United States. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We'd like to provide an intervention on Working Papers 96 and 173. Uh, regards to Working Paper 96 by the UAE, the United States appreciates the interest in the new and emerging area of the space industry. However, and as mentioned previously before, we believe that it's premature to consider the development of international rules relating to space flights. We appreciate Recommendation B on identifying other issues that should be addressed, and we feel that this is currently being addressed and should continue to be addressed in the Space Learning Group. And we also encourage participation from other states. Concerning Recommendation C, we see national regulations focusing on safety and operations of deconfliction with other use of airspace as the appropriate means of regulating this emerging industry. For these reasons, we do not support ICAO collecting best practices and lessons learned. However, we, do ca we caution against ICAO developing standards and recommended practices for space operations. I'm sorry, let me correct myself there. For these reasons, we support ICAO collecting best practices and lessons learned. However, we caution against ICAO developing standards and recommended practices for space operations. We continue to welcome dialogue on this subject. Good morning, Mr. Chair. With regard to working paper 173, the United States recognizes there is a growing need for the coordination of new entrants into controlled airspace, and we support the development of guidance material to facilitate programs, <coughs> excuse me, such as Google Project Loon and Facebook Akia. Nevertheless, the United States believes it is premature to consider development of guidance materials for suborbital and near space operations. U.S. law prohibits any action that would unnecessarily inhibit the growth of the commercial space transport industry, and we regulate only to the extent necessary to ensure the safety of the public and property. This position is clearly stated in Working Paper 162. With regard to some of the recommendations contained in Working Paper 173, the United States fully agrees that increased coordination is necessary to ensure the safe operation of space vehicles through controlled airspace. However, the U.S. believes it is premature to consider international standards or guidance materials for space vehicle operations or equipage at this time. The United States encourages using lessons learned from the successful work of Google Loon and IKEA be shared by all states. The U.S. supports efforts to coordinate different levels of risk between aviation and space operations as characterized in the acceptable level of risk approach being uh, implemented by the U.S., but believes it is premature to develop international guidelines for airspace closure procedures at this time. As noted in previous U.S. interventions, the U.S. advocates continued dialogue between the aviation and space communities to determine how airspace access can be made ever more safe and more efficient. Thank you. Thank you, United States. France? Merci, Mr. Thank you, Chairman. Good morning, everyone. France supports the recommendations 
WP 16 recommendations from the Secretary, as well as uh, the Working Paper 41 from Europe, as well as the comments from Spain, particularly the recommendation, uh, the addition of uh, other recommendations. It is important that uh, airspace operations above 600 be considered with the same attention, the same level of safety as those above, uh, 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 above and below 600. I would ask the Secretary to find a, a way to express higher airspace and lower airspace and nearer airspace to work on the other language version so that these concepts are understandable in the other languages. France would, in addition, like to remind that flights above 600 must comply with the environmental standards in place and also uh, ensure sustainable development of those flights. We would also like to insist on flights above uh, flight level 600 as well as supersonic flights must meet the standards uh, for noise uh, uh, as well as greenhouse gas emissions. Finally, France generally supports uh, the U.S. paper 162 which uh, is in line with uh, other of the papers. We would like to, as well, uh, mention the comment from Iceland regarding uh, C in paper 162, and to integrate these into GANP as well as into the ASBUS. We would like to have the assurance that this will also cover commercial uh, operations in the suborbital and uh, space areas. Thank you. Thank you, France. Republic of Korea. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, everybody. My delegation welcomes and supports all papers. Recognizing the diverse potential of uh, new aviation entrants, and the necessity for a review on international norm and ICA role for a higher airspace operation. We support the particularly the recommendation in working paper 16 by Secretariat, working paper 162 by United States, and working paper 166 by ICCAI. Thank you. Thank you, Nigeria. Thank you very much, Chair. Nigeria supports Working Paper 173 by Council, Working Paper 162 by the United States, and our Working Paper 16 from the Secretariat. Our intervention is the, the choice of uh, the phrase higher airspace operation to replace uh, operations above flight level 600. Uh, may likely be confusing with uh, existing use of lower airspace, upper airspace and also the need to use a distinct specific airspace volume uh, as a, above flight level 600 because of vertical separation that might differ, similar to what we have in the RVSM airspace. So Nigeria supports the use of the phrase operations above flight level 600 as against use of higher airspace that may be confusing. Thank you. Thank you, Nigeria. Cabo Verde. Muchas gracias, señor presidente. Thank you, Chairman. Good morning, everyone. The Cabo Verde delegation wishes to intervene uh, in order to support the working paper 16 from the Secretariat regarding flights above uh, FL 600. Cabo Verde has already supported the Loon project. And uh, we even have signed an agreement in 2016. And therefore, we support the paper as well from Kenya 105, as well as Working Paper 136 from Peru. We also would like to say that we support uh, 162 from the United States. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Saudi Arabia. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning to all. Saudi Arabia appreciates all the working paper presented under this agenda, 5.1. Saudi Arabia also supports the recommendation of working paper 16, as there is a need 
to define provisions and guidance to regulate higher airspace operation and identify issues that may affect the safety of navigation. Saudi Arabia would like to congratulate uh, UAE for presenting working paper 96 that brings and discuss operational and technical issues associated with space activities. We would like to emphasize that the issue covered in this paper should be considered in the ICAO technical and operational activities associated with space operation. Thank you. Thank you. Thailand. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Good morning, all. Thailand would like to uh, thank all the, for the, all the paper presented. And Thailand welcome the working paper 16 presented by the Secretariat and the working paper 173 presented by the Council. Um, we also support the working paper 96 presented by the United Arab Emirates, particularly the need to establish the long-term solutions to cope with the increased commercial space activities um, without posing the negative impact on the current civil aviation operations. Preferably, the compatible solutions with the existing ATM system. In addition, um, Considering the necessities of having timely information to support strategic and tactical planning as well as to enhance the situation awareness, we agree with the ideas of leveraging, uh, leveraging the work done on the SWIM and uh, cyber security to support framework development for the operations above flight level 600. As prescribed and as presented in Working Paper 162 by United States, and we also agree with the interventions made by the Australia regarding the need to clearly define the way forward to tackle this issue. Thank you. Thank you, Thailand, Italy. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, uh, Italy wish to express uh, uh, some consideration about the working paper 173 and uh, uh, noting that it is of paramount importance that the development of this new transportation mode in the higher airspace needs to be harmonized with the performance of operations in the lower airspace and it should not affect the growth of existing commercial operations. We, so we support the paper presented by Council and this, uh, its recommendations uh, which are in line with the working paper 16 that we also support uh, uh, together with the intervention already made by Spain and France, uh, in particular the insertion of the new recommendation under, under letter F. Uh, these, uh, the recommendation of the, the document presented by Council, they measure the scope and work of the ICAO or NOSA space learning group that uh, we think is, uh, is the, the right way to participate and in that sense we share the consideration of the United States on the uh, working paper 173. However, we suggest uh, uh, not to go uh, as in the paper, in the recommendation point C of the paper, uh, introducing some physical limitations like the 100 kilometers and, and uh, stuff like this. Also because uh, uh, it is not coherent with the, 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 this type of operations and uh, a definition now, what is the field of application, is premature and should be left to the further studies. So, uh, in, a, in a world where we approach this, uh, these uh, issues in a performance way, uh, uh, with a performance-based uh, uh, approach, uh, it is really difficult to, to think to put a limitation uh, with a, so, such a prescriptive limitation like 100 kilometers. Thank you. Thank you, Italy. Colombia. Gracias, señor presidente. Thank you, Chair. Colombia agrees with and supports working paper 16 from the Secretariat. We agree with the recommendations from Spain in this respect. We also support working paper 41 from the European Union, 105 from Kenya, 162 from the United States, uh, the UAE paper 96, and the Peru paper 136. And uh, would like to uh, mention the Loon project, which is uh, 
underway in Colombia. This working paper shows all of the potential that this system holds. And it's very useful uh, when there are natural disasters, as has been shown. Thank you. Thank you, Colombia, ICC, AIA. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just to mention that uh, ICC AIA strongly supports the collaboration between the industry and the government. And just to note that uh, the industry has been working collectively together within ICC AIA under a working group on upper airspace and will continue to do so. And will share the procedures that are being developed internal to the industry with ICAO in any way and fashion that ICAO uh, would like. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Brazil? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Brazil supports working paper 16, working paper 96, working paper 162, and the accommodation on the letter D of working paper 41 regarding the development of ICAO provisions for use of airspace at high altitudes above flight level 600, which concentrates great explanatory potential. Furthermore, Brazil welcomes with great enthusiasm the contents of working paper 105 of Kenya and working paper 136 of Peru, which reports how aviation system can be variously useful for society. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Brazil. If there are no more comments, I'm ready to sum up. We have AFCAC. Thank you very much, Chairman. Good morning, everyone. AFCAC would like to support all the working papers under this agenda item, but particularly uh, the commentary from Nigeria regarding the expression uh, being used, the terminology for flights above FL 600. We believe that uh, operations uh, above flight level 600 should be used in order that there not be misunderstanding with respect to the fact that the uh, ICAO has not yet developed guidance uh, on these issues. Thank you. Thank you, Afkak. I will now proceed to sum up. With regards to agenda item 5.1, working paper 1641, 105, 136, 96, 162, 173, and 166. The following summary conclusion is provided. The committee acknowledged that developments in higher airspace operations, including numbers of aircraft and geographic areas, continue to grow. The committee agreed that guidance from ICAO and, as necessary, other provisions on the regulatory aspects of higher airspace operations would be beneficial. Wide support was provided for the need to work with states and industry to identify issues affecting the global air navigation system and to continue to promote harmonization. The committee agreed that states that have regulated higher airspace operations are urged to share through ICAO when appropriate their experience and expertise with other states. And the com committee agreed to urge states to provide assistance to other states on the regulatory aspects of higher airspace operations. Finally, the committee agreed that there should be clarity in the scope of the work of ICAO and to pursue a multidisciplinary approach to study the subjects. Are there any remarks to the summary? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It seems to me that in your summary, you did not mention the proposed additional recommendation made by Spain. And so I'd like to know how this will be handled. And I would like to insist a second time that it is important to take into consideration the existing environmental standards to ensure um, uh, lasting development in the sector. 
Thank you, France. We'll take a clarification from the Secretary. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so to clarify, yes, we, uh, we've taken note of uh, the discussions that has happened and we will now go and draft the report. And uh, as for the proposed text for the uh, addition to the recommendation, we will be in touch with, the auth uh, the, uh, with Iceland to, uh, to get some text that we can then consider and ensure that it's consistent with the discussions that we have just heard. Thank you, Secretary. Any other remarks? Okay, I see none with that. We would close the sub agenda sub item 5.1. As stated earlier, we would like to open agenda item 5.2 with a clarification from the Secretary. Secretary? Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and good morning, everyone. We were concerned in the Secretariat yesterday that there might have been some misunderstanding related to the aircraft registration network and how it relates to drones or small unmanned aircraft. So we put together this slide in order to make sure that we can brief you on exactly what it is that we are talking about with the Aircraft Registration Network, the ARN. Now first, it's important to note that ARN related to drones, unmanned aircraft, is optional for states. It is designed as a network to facilitate the exchange of information between national aircraft registries. States are already required to maintain a registry of all aircraft registered in their state. In most cases, this registry has not been expanded to include small unmanned aircraft, although increasingly a separate registration system is being implemented. The objective of the ICAO ARN is to connect national registries in order to facilitate the voluntary exchange of authorized data between CAAs or other entities that are approved by the individual state. This latter could include law enforcement, air navigation services or UTM providers, or others. And it could be between specific states or all participating states, again, as approved by the individual state. ICAO would provide the necessary digital interface with existing state registries, or for those states who request additional support, ICAO would provide the platform to host their own digital application to manage day-to-day -day drone operations, or registrations, rather. Now, the ARN will enable connectivity for services to the global aviation community, such as facilitating drone operations in foreign states. Now, drones do travel across international borders, but most often as baggage or cargo. If states are participating in the ARN, registration information can be obtained by the state in whose airspace the drone is operating. It is important to point out that only that information that was authorized by the state of registry would be accessible to the state where the operation is occurring. Now the CAST ICAO classification of drone manufacturers, the most national drone registries use open text fields to describe the drone manufacturer and model. As a result, a particular make and model drone may be listed differently in the same registry. For example, a Phantom 4 could also be a Phantom Dash 4 or a Phantom 4 Pro. So the Commercial Aviation Safety Team, ICAO Common Taxonomy Team, is an international group charged with developing common taxonomies that enable establishing a standard indus industry language, thereby improving the quality of information and communication. 
Integrating drones into the CAST ICAO taxonomy will facilitate the interoperability and exchange of registry information. Rapid identification of drones using globally accepted unique identification is also facilitated. Now, the concerns were expressed related to potential legal issues. So we also wanted to clarify that the committee should note that the ARN development is being guided by the ARN subgroup of the legal committee's Article 21 task force. So the legal committee of ICAO is fully engaged in this development work. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Secretariat. And so the floor is open for discussion. As you will recall, the committee had agreed that we did not want this item. We are asking if the information from the Secretariat would cause the committee to change what was previously decided. I see Code Devoir. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. state. So the identification and registration really work hand in hand. Thank you. Thank you. Australia. Thank you, Chair, and thank the Secretariat for the clarification, uh, although they did worry me there for a minute when they started using the word tax, uh, but they went on to call it taxonomy, so I felt better then. The um, I think Australia now is comfortable with um, work proceeding on um, the registry. The only thing that I still don't think Australia would really want the word expedite. I don't think this is the highest priority in the huge workload of those working on uh, RPAS or drones in ICAO, but um, happy for work to proceed. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Australia. Senegal. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So my question is similar to that of Cote d'Ivoire. The response that was provided by the Secretariat uh, helps a bit, but I would like to say that we should look at it again in the future so that there's some guidance on this, because we would like to identify drones wherever they are in our region. That's extremely important, and I think that we will have to look at that. Even if ISKO doesn't have a response right away, this aspect will has to be, have to be taken into consideration for uh, identification and registration in the future. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Senegal. Uh, Canada. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Secretary, it's a clarification with respect to uh, the topic uh, and your willingness to reopen this uh, uh, discussion. We've uh, noted that Working Paper 5 was not, was not explicit uh, on this topic, and the slide you've presented clarifies um, a number of elements with respect to the aircraft registration network. I do, I, uh, we would uh, support the uh, clarifications provided as we do want to um, uh, reiterate that Canada would want uh, registration to remain a national effort due to technical limitations, privacy considerations pursuant to our domestic law, and this is consistent with the convention. This could still be done in a manner that includes standardization com compatibility with the global registry system. Thanks again, Secretary, for this clarification. Thank you, Canada, Nigeria. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, Secretary, for the additional clarification. We support this initiative uh, in view of the uh, future integration of UTM and ATM. Uh, identification and registration is very key to this uh, integration. Thank you very much. Thank you, Denmark. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, and thank you to the Secretariat for the clarification. Um, we can support the development of a taxonomy for connectivity between the states if there 
is a, a reasonable business case uh, for this. Um, there are limited benefits uh, in, in, in our eyes, but if there, if there is a reasonable benefit, uh, uh, business case for it, then that's fine. Um, could you perhaps clarify when or if IKEA was directed to do this? Thank you. Thank you, Denmark. Secretary. Uh, thank you. So this came up as part of our work out of the 39th Assembly when we were directed to develop provisions and a base, baseline framework for all of the unmanned aircraft systems that remain outside of the international IFR framework. So looking at that, one of the key items that states were struggling with was the registration and identification. And with drones that travel extensively, normally as baggage or cargo, this was more than just simply the registration in one single state. It's a case of drones having to be registered in multiple states, each state where they go and operate. So at our first Drone Enable Symposium in 2017, this was presented to the audience and was strongly supported as an activity that ICAO should undertake. So it was on that basis that we have been progressing. Thank you. Thank you. New Zealand. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, New Zealand likewise uh, appreciates clarification from the Secretariat, and we would also echo the comments of our Australian colleagues. Uh, I'm not sure this is necessarily the highest priority, albeit something important. So we would uh, urge the removal of the word expedite. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, so I'm hearing support that this item should be kept in the work program of IKEA, and the drafting would reflect that intention. Thank you. Okay, so with that, we have come to the end of agenda item five. Thank you. Thank you. We move to the draft report and agenda item three, which is presented for approval by committee E for submission to the plenary. We start with agenda item three, enhancing the global navigation system 3.1, system-wide information management, SWIM. And we take paragraph 3.1, Greece. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I have uh, some comments on this paragraph. Uh, we propose a change in uh, the line uh, 3 from the bottom. Uh, we add uh, provisions together with relevant industry standards and then we strike out standards recommended practices SAPS and we continue together with the detailed guidance material. We add working paper four, further mentioned and as it is, and then in uh, the line, in the second line um, before to the bottom, and we add the uh, end implementation toolbox. We propose the changes because they capture better the working paper, and uh, we have considered and uh, additionally. It is advisory, it is advisory 
sorry, advisably to be done uh, with the relevant uh, industry. If you want me, I can uh, provide uh, the proposals that uh, we have raised. Thank you. Thank you, Greece. Is there any objection to this proposal by Greece? Okay, I'm seeing no objections, so uh, can Greece, you can provide the text to the Secretary, please. 3.2. Greece. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, in the second line from the bottom, we propose to add a sentence that clarifies uh, the responsibility of uh, the international communities uh, which maintain information exchange models. So, after uh, uh, the exchange models, we add that the international communities which maintain information exchange models in order to clarify uh, and uh, capture the discussion that we have already done. Thank you. Thank you, Greece. Is there any objection to this uh, proposal? Okay, Saudi Arabia, do you wish to object or add another comment? Another comment. Okay, so I'm seeing no objection to the proposal from Greece. And I'm taking Saudi Arabia with uh, another comment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have an amendment on the last two sentences of this paragraph, where we st it will start when, when there is a major change or update to the information exchange models, and then to provide, let me have a look at that. So that's what we need to provide guidance for the implementation, including mapping of changes that can be used for convert where required. I can pass that to the Secretary if you want. Yes, so, uh, Saudi Arabia is seeking to amend the same sentence that Chris amended. If there is no objection from the committee, we would uh, ask Saudi Arabia to provide that text and we'll try to combine both texts for the approval of the committee. Okay, I'm seeing no objection, so we'll move to 3.3. Australia. Thank you, Chair. Just a small change um, in the end of the first sentence. Uh, it says, while noting that today's point-to-point -point legacy system would not meet, could we suggest the word future performance requirements? Thank you, Chair. Any objections to the proposal from Australia? I'm seeing none. 3.4. Okay, 3.4, we have Greece. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, we have some uh, changes in uh, this paragraph. In third line from the beginning, we add after, we propose to be added after including aspects related to control user access and as it is afterwards. Then, in the third line from the bottom, after the word committee, uh, we propose uh, to reward focused by was informed on the notion of a single stream access point. And then in uh, the, in the <coughs> next uh, sentence, registries, and we propose to add after registries, including the opinion that this could be considered as delete the recognition that this was and continue an important mechanism of global swim governance. Thank you. Thank you, Greece. Is there any objection to this proposal? OK, 
Yeah, I'm seeing none. Uh, Australia. Oh, thank you, Chair. And uh, it's good to see that Australia and Greece are combining on this paragraph. Um, can I just suggest uh, an additional including at the start? Could we put the word including cyber resilience, comma, and then go on with controlled user access? It was one of the points that was raised in our paper with New Zealand. Thank you, Chair. Any objection to the proposal from New Zealand? Okay. Confirm this would be after swim. Australia? Uh, yes, Chair. Just, just at uh, including uh, cyber resilience, comma, controlled user access, etc. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I'm seeing no objection to the proposals from Australia for 3.4. We move to 3.5. Greece. Thank you, Mr. President. In uh, the last census before the bottom, uh, we have just a small uh, addition. <laughs> Actually, after addition, it was discussed that harmonization and the definition and the following as it is. Thank you. Thank you, Greece. Any objections? I see none. Uh, 3.6. Okay, 3.7. 3.8. Thailand. Thank you, Chairman. Just a small auditorium on 3.8, the second line. Um, after Singapore, I'd like to add uh, Thailand, as this paper uh, called, called um, the Thailand and the United States, as this paper um, called uh, provided by three state. Thank you, Thailand. That will be added. Uh, 3.9, the recommendations. We start with A, Chris. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I would like to propose uh, the addition of the word development uh, before the implementations in order to, to give uh, more co completeness in the, the proposal lay. Any objections from this proposal? Okay, I see none. We move to B. Okay, I see no proposals. We move to C. D. E. Australia. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, in relation to E, can we uh, add a few words after uh, technical infrastructure and governance for SWIM in and include the following text, sufficient detail to ensure safe, comma, efficient and secure globally seamless operations. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Australia. Any objections to this? Yeah, I see none. Greece, still speaking on E. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, we would like uh, to add uh, uh, in E some uh, further uh, uh, comments uh, that refer to the second line uh, after development of uh, proposed to be added provisions <coughs> and then that is uh, read as continue the development of provisions related to information services. And then we propose to add this should include relevant guidance, comma, governance aspects, comma, information content and related information exchange models, full stop. This 
should also support and then as it is technical infrastructure and governance. We propose those changes because it has to, you know, the whole sense of the proposal has to be related with the exact, exact scope of the swim. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Greece. Any objection to the proposals from Greece? Australia? Um, with all due respect to my Greek colleague, that just sounds a bit too complicated. I think I like the way it is. Thank you, Chair. Okay, other than Australia, do we have any objections? Norway? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Norway uh, support uh, the comments from Greece to this uh, paragraph. Thank you. Can I just see a quick short support for by pressing your mics for this inclusion? Okay, thank you. I am seeing support for the change proposed by Chris. F. Chris. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I would like uh, to comment uh, these uh, three points, uh, F, G, and H together, because they are interrelated. So I start from the point H, sorry for that, but uh, I have to explain the whole uh, of my thought. We, co we propose to strike it out because it was not discussed during the meeting and there are not any conclusions on that. So, I repeat our proposal is uh, point H to be deleted. Then, uh, we propose to withdraw the point G because, to our opinion, it goes too far. However, in order to capture the essence of point G, on security concept, we propose to add in point F, that's why I come again to point F, after SWIM framework, we propose to add including security by design. That's all my comments. Mr. President, thank you. Thank you, Greece. Uh, the Secretary will just make a comment. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, we have no uh, no uh, proposed regarding the amendment to F. Uh, it's acceptable for the Secretariat, but just would like to add some information that literal age was discussed in several papers, 256, uh, 75, 106. And this is actually one of the ongoing uh, work on the information management panel that is thinking about harmonization of uh, these models through uh, another model, actually, that is the ARM. So we would prefer to keep this, to keep the task that is already ongoing. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Secretary. Uh, United States, are you speaking on this proposal from Greece? I think, Mr. Chairman. Um, we would actually prefer to keep G as is um, in, in due regard with the Secretariat's comments. Um, the Interconnected Trust Global Framework or Global Swim Framework we consider a very important aspect and think it needs to be called out in that term. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, based on the clarification from the Secretariat and the comment by the United States, I will ask if the committee is in support of keeping the items as presented, that's F, G, and H. Just please indicate support for keeping. Okay, thank you. I'm seeing broad support for keeping F, G, and H as is. Norway? Yes, uh Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Norway really welcome the SWIM as an important global uh, 
system for improving efficiency and safety. But we also think it is important to recognize how far we have uh, got in our discussions and our decisions and uh, conclusions. So we think it should be uh, properly uh, uh, reflected in the, uh, in the report uh, what is decided and what is uh, just considered. So we agree with the comments from Greece. Thank you. Thank you, Noe. Russian Federation. Thank you, Chair. The Russian Federation would like to perhaps propose uh, after the break that when such editorial uh, substantive changes are being proposed, we would like to see the text on the screen. It is very difficult to seize the idea and, the un and understand the meaning when it's being done orally. So let us make the final conclusions later. We would like to see it in writing on the screen. Thank you. Yes, Secretary. Thanks, Chair, and uh, Rush, we do appreciate the, uh, uh, the sentiments there, but uh, trying to do drafting with a, a room of 700 people really does not work. That would take us uh, 10 hours to get through one paper. So our intent is always to take the intent of the room to put the final draft into the yellow cover, and you will see that as the final report. So we're trying to take the consensus of the room rather than have you draft the words as we go along on here, because we do not have the time to do so. Thanks, Chair. Thank you, Republic of Korea. Thank you, Mr. Chair. As explained by Secretariat, uh, we also prepared to keep uh, recommended, uh, keep recommendation small h. Uh, my delegation viewed the draft text well captured and the point I made and supported during the discussion. So, as such, we don't agree the suggestion made by Greece. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So, we are ready to move on to I. The committee has accepted that we'll keep F, G, and H. Uh, discussion on I. Okay, I'm seeing no comment. J. Okay, thank you, no comment. So we are uh, accepted with amendments to draft report for agenda item 3.1. We will take coffee and resume with 3.2. Thank you. <laughs>